Hi, in this video, we're gonna build the ultimate lead management flow. This lead management flow is super simple, yet super effective and works for businesses for all sizes. Without any coding, we're gonna build a simple web page where a customer can submit their information and their query. And we have an AI bot, which can answer any question customer have. So we have a better chance of generating more leads. And as soon as they submit the form, we're gonna get a Slack notification so we don't miss a single lead. Let's get started. For this workflow, we're gonna be using Zapier. So when you log into your Zapier account, you're gonna see interfaces on the left and that's where we get started. So when you go to interfaces, if you already have one, you're gonna see the list over there. If not, we create a new one. So you have an option for creating a form or a customer portal. Since we're doing lead capture, we're gonna start off with a form. So you click on form and you're gonna see some of the templates or you can start from scratch. For most of the users, these templates are gonna be a good starting point because they kind of cover most of the use cases you will encounter when building a new form for the website. So we're gonna start here with a contact us form. We're gonna assume that we are an events planning business in British Columbia. You could be a retail company, you could be a tech company, you could be literally any company and this workflow will still work. We need a form on the website where people can inquire about the services and hopefully we can get them on a consultation call and get a new customer. We're gonna see a bunch of templates here for a form and we're gonna start with get in touch form. So as soon as the template loads, you're gonna see a table that's connected with a template. Think of tables as like Excel, but better because you have so much control over it. We're gonna get into the table as soon as well. And then we have zaps. So zaps down here are basically all the automations that are gonna be associated with the form, which we're gonna build as we go along this process. So we have two pages for our interface here. One is get in touch page, which is gonna be the form where a customer fills out the information. And the second one is the thank you page. This is the page the user is going to see as soon as they hit the button submit. So we're gonna go to get in touch page because this is the one we want to customize. So we're using a template. So you're gonna see some predefined questions already in the template. So all you have to now do is basically edit the text. So we're gonna change the header and the subheader and we're gonna customize the fields. Some of the basic fields are already there. And if you wanna change like what the field title is or what the placeholder text should be, you should just click on the field and on the right menu, you should be able to change those details. So instead of company name, which is irrelevant to this business, we're gonna change it to how can we help? And the type of information we want from customer is not going to be a short text. So we're gonna change that to long text. And as soon as we change some of this information, our table, which is like assume our Excel sheet where all the data is gonna go, is also gonna change automatically. And then for all the fields that you do not require anymore, you can just delete them by simply simply scrolling down, you can see the option for removing them from the form. And then for any new fields you wanna add, we're just gonna to go to the top here and click on the plus icon. And when we add a new field, we have an option to either pick one of the existing columns from our table, Excel sheet, or we can add a new column to our table, which is gonna be the field in the form. It doesn't have a field for budget, so we're just gonna add a new one. So the field name and table is internal, so you can say whatever makes more sense for you. Then we're gonna pick the type for this field. In this case, we pick a currency, we put a label, what customer is going to see, we're gonna select the format for currency we want and if we want decimals or not. Any placeholder text you want or any help text you want. So help text is something that's gonna appear at the bottom of the field just to help customers understand if certain field requires more information. And then you have an option to either make the field hidden. This is if you wanna use something internally or if you wanna have the field required. So you know if customer cannot skip that field. If you don't check required, then the customer should be able to submit the form even if they don't complete out that particular section of the form. Once you create the field, you're gonna have it inserted onto your form. Similarly, you can add as many fields as you want, whatever is relevant to the customer. Pro tip is to minimize the data customer has to enter. So that way there's a higher chance they're likely going to complete through the form. And then here at the bottom, we're gonna change the button text to schedule a free consultation call. Because our goal here is that they fill out the information and we get on a call with them so we can understand really what they want and hopefully we can try to convert them as a customer if we're able to help, of course. Likewise, you can go to the other page, which is the thank you page. You can edit whatever you want. If you wanna make your interface or your page here a bit more complex, so there's more requirements from your project for your business, you can just scroll to the bottom and add a new component. So you'll see on the left here, there are some people components here. You have a component for signing up for demo, like a quick form, a table, like a Kanban view for tasks, or an AI chatbot, which is exactly what we're gonna add because why not, AI is cool, right? So here you can either pick one of your existing AI chatbots, and if you're not familiar, we're just gonna build one right now. So I just started off with this new bot called Ziva, which is my AI assistant. So what I'm gonna do here here is I'm just gonna call here on Ziva and then I'm gonna edit that chatbot. So I'm just gonna walk you through quickly on how to build an AI chatbot that you can add here onto this web page. You can give it a name and then you can have a greeting type as static or dynamic. So static just means that the greeting text as you see here, it's gonna stay there the same every single time. Generated would just be that every time a new user is there or like if somebody refreshes the page, there's going to be like a random AI generated greetings for the user. And you can have a placeholder for like the chat bar, whatever you want it to say. So here we're just 
going to say, if you have any questions, just ask me. You don't have to play with other settings. You can leave it as this and then move on to the instructions tab. This is basically like the brains of your AI chatbot. So you can give it all the instructions about your business and tell AI what role it needs to play. So we're just going to say here, you're a customer success manager at my events company. I will share my business details. And your job is to help customer with their event planning stuff based on the information that you know. And your goal is to help them schedule a call with us. So I'm going to basically copy paste a whole bunch of data about the business of this event company. And then that's pretty much it. And I'm going to save my changes. If you have a lot of documentation for a business, you know, you're an enterprise business and you have like a whole bunch of documentation, you can also add knowledge sources. So this is where you'll be able to add your documents. So your AI chatbot has a lot more context to refer to when customers are asking any questions. So there's a lot more stuff you can do uh, with Zapier chatbots. We can do a whole separate video on that one. So we're going to keep this one simple for now. And uh, we're just going to test it out quickly here. How our AI chatbot works. So I've already given the instructions that my business is in Vancouver here. So it is giving recommendations of some areas for wedding things in Vancouver here. It works pretty good. Without any coding, we were able to generate this page that has a form which is already mapped to a table and an AI chatbot to help our customers. And if you click on this link, this is where you're going to get the form. You can add a whole separate page on your website with a custom URL or you can embed onto any page at all. So you can basically have a custom domain and like, you know, people can go to your website onto this web page and they'll be able to use this form. You can kind of dive into the design aspect of it as well. You can make, uh, you know, you can make the branding and the colors all coherent with your existing brand. And then you can add custom domain. So this page can live on your website and like, you know, with your URL. And then so it feels more natural for the customers. We don't have a domain connected, but as you can see, once we click on this link, we have this web page where people can submit their information. They can interact with the AI chatbot and get the questions answered. As soon as a prospect enters information, we get all the data in Zapier tables. So as you can see, there's like a bunch of columns, bunch of rows where all the data is coming in, but there's so much more you can do with tables that you cannot do with Excel or Google Sheets. We can add automations. We can do a lot of filtering automatically. We can create multiple views. There's a lot we can dive into, but for now, let's just see how we're going to use tables in context with the lead management flow we're building here. So in the bottom here, you're going to see an option to automate. You can automate to bring data in. This is where like, you know, if you want to pull leads from your type form, from Google Sheets, from like Facebook ad campaign, from a LinkedIn ad campaign automatically into this table, or you have an option to export data out where every time a new lead comes in, we're going to send a Slack message to ourselves that there's a new lead with some relevant information, or you can enrich your lead. This is where you can probably use AI as well, where you can get AI to scrape some information, use other apps to find about their company name, their country, their city, and whatever other fields you need. Maybe you can leverage here these automations to bring that data in. So we're going to build this automation to send data out. So let's get started. Now it's going to look like a typical Zapier automation, which you're probably used to. Here we already have a trigger, which is a new record in Zapier tables. And then our action is going to be creating a Slack message. So we're going to test the trigger to make sure Zapier records and the tables are being pulled correctly. And then we're going to select our account in Slack and we're going to select, you know, which channel or which individual we want to message in Slack and then use the data from the tables to add to our message text. Here, we're just going to say new lead woohoo. And we're going to add the customer name. We're going to add customer budget and what customer request is for this uh, events celebration company that we have here. Now, when we get a new lead, we're going to get our Slack message right away. So we're going to be on the ball and never miss a single lead ever again. This is a simple workflow. For those who think this flow is too simple, let me give you something that's going to make things even better. So I'm going to link this template here in the video notes as well. But basically, at Zapier, there's a template for lead management that takes a whole automation lead management flow to the next level. This is a template. You can use it for free. So when you're signed in and you use the template, here's what the workflow looks like. So we have an interface like we just built where the customer is going to fill out the information. Then the information is going to go into the tables like we just saw. And after that, we're going to get a notification. This is pretty much what we did. Right? So here, uh, the next stage is a conditional where the automation checks if the client has budget or not. And if the lead doesn't have the budget or the budget that you're looking for, it's going to get marked as not qualified in your CRM automatically. And if it is qualified, it's going to be tagged qualified in your CRM. And then using the data customers provided, we can automatically draft a personal response to reach out to the customer, saving us so much time. So without any coding, we built a simple web page with a form where customer can submit their information an air chatbot with which customer can interact with to get most of the questions answered. And as soon as they submit their query, we get a Slack message and all the data is added to our tables automatically. I hope you try this workflow and see how much time it saves you. And if you have any questions, please leave it in the comments. We'll be happy to answer them because we want to help you save more time and work more effectively because why work hard when you can work smart. We'll see you in the next video.